Warning, this video is not intended for persons underneath the age of 13. Thank you. How many encounters are in a game when you don't spend half them making meta jokes? When is the last time any of us really rolled for something that we wanted? How long has it been since any of us really needed a natural 20 that we rolled? The game as we knew it is gone. The game of take backs and not taking notes has been replaced by a game of caution and strategy. In a game where a DM has stepped up, we are all forced to finally start flying. Welcome everyone, I am the Ares1999, and today we are returning to the concept of zombies in D&D. Previously, we talked about Left 4 Dead, and today we are doing The Walking Dead. If you want to, you can think of this video as a sequel, or just think of the ideas here on their own. If you're unfamiliar, The Walking Dead is a series of graphic novels created by Robert Kirkman starting in 2003 and finishing in 2019. It's about a police officer named Rick Grimes who went into a coma and woke in a world crawling with undead. He's able to make it to an encampment, which just so happens to be where his family and best friend Shane Walsh are living. The series details the group's desperate fight for it to survive. I've only read a few issues, but I do recommend it. Now, whereas Left 4 Dead was a short-term style game where the party was trying to get to a safe location, The Walking Dead is all about long-term survival amid a zombie plague. Now, throwing in a plague would probably fit in almost any campaign setting and can shake things up in an ongoing game. Perhaps the party is out traveling and they come across a town where several houses have large red X's on them, no one goes near each other, and the town guard is on constant high alert. Upon inquiring, they find out that this town is suffering from what they call the Scourge of Undeath. Perhaps they learn that a local potion brewer has a recipe for a cure, but it requires a rare ingredient. This could be the start of a fetch quest, where the party has to go into a nearby forest to find a magic flower or something like that. Maybe when they are hunting down this item, they find that the plague was caused by a necromancer who is trying to grow his army. They would have to take him down to get the flower back and then bring it safely to town. Now, to add to the stakes of the game, you can make it so that way one or more members of the party can track the disease. Now, unless this is a one-shot, I wouldn't recommend making this feel like a pre-scripted event of who's going to get it, because no one likes being you know, singled out by the DM like that. What you should have them do instead is make a constitution saving throw and not tell them right away who has it to add to the suspense. Perhaps they don't even realize till the next morning that there's anything wrong with them. And if you want to, you can make it so that way the entire party gets infected. Heck, perhaps there was no DC and everyone fails their constitution saving throw. But they don't need to know that. Another thing you could do is, for the symptoms, perhaps each day, the sick person just gets another level of exhaustion, with the sixth level being death. Alternatively, you could just have their health or constitution score slowly decrease each day, and if it hits zero, then they'll also die, and the whole time their skin slowly rots. Now, since this is an inherently magical illness, it really is more of a curse. As such, you could say that it can't be easily cured by effects like lesser restoration. But you might all allow that to at least slow the effects. Same would go for the monk purity of body and the paladin divine health. Uh, spells like greater restoration or wish could work to get rid of this, but since those are high level spells, it would be harder to try to clean up the whole mess with it. Now, imagine this on a larger scale, would you? Perhaps the plague isn't confined to one area, but is spread across over a whole county, or even an entire kingdom. Imagine the way of something like that. This could actually be a really interesting campaign setting where the players have to live in an infected world. On top of direct illness, there's of course the zombies themselves to contend to. Entire cities and towns would fall to this, and how would the government respond? Would the town guard have to just wall these cities off, or perhaps burn them to the ground to prevent the overall spread? I mean, because if most or all of a village is dead already, you're going to need some way to contain it, because zombies would be a massive runaway problem. 
If you want to, you could have this be the conclusion of the first mission. You tell your players ahead of time that it will be focused on undead, but not in what way. First, everything seems like a normal D&D game, and they may even speculate that a vampire or a lich will be the big bad. Then you just give them a normal delivery message with a vague warning about some new illness, and along the way, they have to fight some zombies, and they probably won't think anything of it. When they get to town, though, it'll be like the Wiltshire Estates from The Walking Dead. They explore the town and find it crawling with zombies, and so basically we'll have to turn coat and run. <laughs> and they don't notice until they leave that there was a sign reading, All dead, do not enter. From there, they could learn that the plague of undeath is spreading quickly across the land. Healers are becoming more and more overburdened since more people are showing up seeking their health, and as people are moving to cities, since that's where the resources are, they have to enact tighter screenings, like curfews and zero-tolerance policies for necromancers. At this point, you have two main directions that the campaign can go to, and I like to call these Learn to Heal and Learn to Deal. For Learn to Heal, the plague and its cause are the main focus of the story. The players stop whatever villain started the curse and find a magical solution for it. Like I said above, it could be some flower in the woods to make a potion, or maybe it's a spell that they teach to all the healers in the kingdom. For Learn to Deal, the plague just becomes a part of life. There is no cure, and as such, the zombies become more of an obstacle than a target. And you could just use this to add depth to any other type of game. Perhaps on a high seas adventure, the players have an encounter where a ship full of only zombies crashes into their ship. This would be a bit of a meta choice for you, though, where after a few sessions you gauge the players for what direction they want to go in. After all, if the cure does exist within the canon of the game, then the characters are most likely going to want to seek it out. For a specific campaign type that I feel could fit either option, perhaps a group of extremists believe that the only way to save the world is to wipe out every settlement where the plague has spread. Then the party could choose to stand with or against them. Perhaps, after a few sessions, the players show up in a village, and a team of constructs is laying waste to everyone in there, repeating the recorded message that, with your death, the land is one step closer to being cleansed. After, or I suppose, if the party chooses to defeat these killbots, they will be confronted by these exterminators, who might be feeling generous, so they give them the offer of... It's simple. Get on board, or get out of the way. Perhaps they could get on good terms with these exterminators and try to opt for a better solution to end the callings. In a Learn to Heal game, this would just mean stopping the plague outright. In a Learn to Deal game, however, this might mean training people with better hygiene practices and on how to fight the undead. That said, joining the villain should always be an option. There's nothing inherently wrong with playing as villains, as long as the whole party's on board. This is actually my philosophy for any game type. When you think about it, most D&D characters are not morally good. They rob when they can, they rarely spare their enemies, and they tend to care more about gold than other people's lives. Is teaming up with the bad guy really that much out of the question? Maybe they even demand that they be allowed to spare those who did not directly contact the infected. I'm pretty sure that this wouldn't even defy any paladin oaths. Oath of Devotion just mandates honesty, courage, compassion, honor, and duty. A person could interpret taking down the few to save the many to be a courageous act of compassion. In fact, they may even feel that they are honor-bound to fulfill this duty. Oath of Redemption calls for peace, innocence, patience, and wisdom. If the party has exhausted all other options, and will not kill the uninfected, then this kind of applies here. <gasps> okay, I think that's enough for today. Wow, last time we talked about racial dynamics, and this time it was mass euthanization. Hopefully next week we'll be a little more lighthearted. If you want to see some more from me, I have a special homebrew video that was themed around, you know, different Christmas elements. And then I have a... Um, basically macroeconomics video where I figure out 
how much D&D gold would be worth in our real world, both in a medieval setting and in a modern one. I have an actual play podcast called Enter the Dungeon, which is already 32 sessions in. We're having a lot of fun if you want to join us, so I'll be linking to that in the description. That's all I really have. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Have a great day, and God bless.